The following program is made possible by the partners and friends of Ronnie Phillips Ministries International. You were created to be more than you are now, to love more than you love now, and to live a life that's fully alive. Take a few minutes and join Pastor Ronnie Phillips for a message of grace that will help you live fully alive. Greetings partners and friends, it's Pastor Ronnie Phillips, lead pastor of Abbas House in Chattanooga, Tennessee and founder of Ronnie Phillips Ministries International, RPMI. I want to thank you for partnering with our ministry. Every little bit helps us get the gospel to the ends of the earth and I thank you from the bottom of my heart for partnering with this ministry and helping Fully Alive uh, continue to expand um, in its efforts to touch and shake and advance the kingdom. Today I want to bring you a message called Towel over tongue. You know, we live in a culture where we always have to get the last word. So much arguing on the news, so much arguing on social media. Everybody's got to get the last word, blah, 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 blah. You know, even good people have big mouths. You know, the apostle Peter had a big mouth. He cussed. He often said things uh, at the wrong time. And Jesus got on to him uh, in John chapter 13 because he didn't know what he was talking about and he was speaking out of turn. You know, I say that true Christians should learn how to get a towel and wash the feet of other people and serve other people. A little less talk and a lot more action. Today I want to tell you how you can really live the Christian life. It's not with your tongue, it's with a towel. Hope you enjoy this. We live in a culture today where we have to comment on everything. We're more interested in being right than we are being right with people. We're more interested in our own righteousness than the righteousness of God. I come from a long line of big mouths. And I can get you told in about 3.4 seconds. I can. I'm good with my words. But years ago, the Lord convicted me. And this isn't going to sound very spiritual. But the Lord told me to shut up. People wonder why I haven't been as outspoken as I once was politically. I've learned a lot about people the last two years. My heart's been broken as I've watched Christians tear each other apart. And I've just made my mind up to do what Jesus did and focus on changing hearts, not changing minds. And you might be able to change a few minds with your mouth, but you will only be able to change hearts with a towel. And the Lord has put me in a place where I don't feel the need to correct everyone on social media, to expose every hypocritical pastor in this city, to defend myself against false accusations or hurtful words. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes that there is a time to speak and there is a time to be silent. In Proverbs, it says, the one who has knowledge uses his words with restraint. It is a spiritual gift to know what to say, how to say it, and when to say it. The choice is simple this morning. Are you going to respond to this world with a towel or a tongue? 
In Psalms 34, it says, Who is the man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. This is not about cuss words. What this is about is gossip, envy, and mouth running. I've taught you that the Hebrew is Lashon Haran, which has to do with the evil tongue. Your tongue will tell on you. You know, Hank Williams had a song, your cheating heart will tell on you. Well, it won't unless your cheating heart causes you to say something with your mouth. Your mouth exposes what's in your heart. And not everybody needs to know what's in your heart if you're in a tough season in your life. If you aren't hearing from God or if God is maturing you, you don't need to speak. You need to allow God to clean you up and do his work. My Bible says that my God will avenge me and defend me. And if my Bible's true, I don't need to defend myself all the time. I should defend those who can't defend themselves. But in this culture we live in, we got to be right. We got to get the last word in. We got to get everybody told. What good does it do to get the last word? How many minds have you changed arguing? Just before the Passover festival, Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. I love this. It says, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. He looks at one that's going to betray him, one that's going to deny him, And he chose the towel over the tongue. This is what it says. The evening meal was in progress. And the devil had already prompted Judas. Judas was the disciple who sold Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver. He was the treasurer. And he got to believing that because he managed the money, he was the reason for the money. He thought his management was the reason for the miraculous. And more times than this time, his mouth told on his heart. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the mill, took his outer clothing, wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. Simon Peter said, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. In other words, keep your mouth shut and let me do my thing. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord Simon Peter said, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who have a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean. Are you clean? Though not every one of you. He knew what was going down with Judas. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I've done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightfully so. I am your teacher. I am your Lord. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. 
Now that you know these things, you will be blessed. Everybody say blessed. blessed. If you do them. Sometimes you just really need to listen or look. God will speak to you. God will teach you things. God will give you wisdom from a thousand books if you'll just listen and look. God will show you who to connect with, who to date, who to stay away from. Matthew 12, 37, for by your words, you will be justified and by your words, you will be condemned. So by your words, it's important to speak life. It's important to speak the oracles of God, the things of God, it's important to speak faith. You'll be justified for those words. But if you're speaking from a place of emotion or you've allowed your flesh to control your mind and you speak, you'll be condemned by what you say. The evil tongue is not just about lying about someone in the Hebrew text. It's also about speaking negative truth about someone. This will mess with you. Our Jewish friends taught it this way, that even negative truth was a sin because it's gossip. They equated negative truth with the same sin as robbery and murder. I think if we understood that before we spoke, it would change our language. That is why the spiritual gift of a prayer language is still valid and biblical. Because there are times where your flesh is so weak or you've just lost a loved one and you're broken and, and, and you can't pray your own language. And so you pray in a language that only heaven can recognize, that the enemy can't take notes off of. Kingdom language. You don't have to believe in it. It's truth. You know what a hater is? You know what haters are? Let me tell you. It's having anger towards everyone receiving success. Having anger towards everyone receiving success. You've got to ask yourself, what is it that makes you hate that person that God died for? You say, Pastor Ronnie, sometimes you've got to stand up for righteousness. Absolutely. You've got to stand up for truth. You've got to speak against evil got to stand up for the disenfranchised. You've got to stand on the word of God. No denying that. But much of what I see is hatred, anger, jealousy, resentment, and even arrogance. God called you to share your faith and lift his name up. What in you is broken that you think you've got to fix everybody? What is unproven in you that you have to prove yourself to every person you disagree with? Number one, Jesus gave us, and he set an example of humility. The Bible says, our reward for humility is riches and honor, humility. Here in this text, Jesus bows down on his knees and he washes the feet of his disciples, his followers. The Bible also says that pride brings disgrace, but with the humble there is wisdom. And Jesus said, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. And he who humbles himself will be exalted. 
Jesus showed us the image of humility. And he said, we're to follow his lead, his example. I'm no longer moved by how loud someone screams, how long someone shakes in the floor, how loud one speaks in the the other tongue in a public setting. Those things used to move me. Now what moves me is when people get their towel, they start serving others. And they start bringing people to Christ. When they start loving their neighbor, when they forgive that person that they hate, yes, sir. that they have good reason to hate, but they bless those that curse them, pray for those who spitefully use them. You want to know what revival is? It's when you change, and I change, and you change. It's fruit that remains, not faith made a mockery of. Jesus set an example of humility. The closest we'll ever be to God is when we serve those that can't do anything for us, Joe. The closest we'll ever be to Jesus is when we serve those that can't give us anything in return. To me, that's revival. And I've been in a number of them. It's fruit that remains. He set an example of humility. It was also an act of submission. We are told to submit ourselves to God and resist the devil. When Jesus bowed and washed their feet, it was an act of submission because his instructions to us would be to submit to governmental authorities. And because he made himself of no reputation and became like us, he had to model what he had told them to do. And that's to submit. Peter couldn't hold his tongue because he didn't understand. Why didn't he understand, Pastor? Because he did not understand at this point in his walk what the true mission of Jesus was. He didn't understand it. You say, how do you know? Because he denied him. Three times he had to be restored back to the faith. And when Jesus restored him, what did he tell him? He said, do you love me? Yes, I love you. Did he say, go run your mouth and win arguments on Facebook? Go criticize everybody that you don't agree with. Win the argument. No. What'd he say? What'd he say? Feed my sheep, man. Take that place of a servant and serve. Wasn't it? Hey, guess what? He was a great preacher and pastor. Thousands were saved under the preaching of this man of God. But it wasn't about his gift. And Jesus didn't care about his gift. He was interested in his heart. Jesus doesn't care about your gift. Everybody in here has a gift. It's the heart behind the gift. It was an example of humility. It was an act of submission. Then there came an interruption of the tongue through the apostle. The Apostle Peter constantly struggled, like many of us, with his tongue. He had two sins committed here. Peter's tongue was a sin of ignorance. Some people sin simply because they don't know any better. They need grace. Sin of Judas was a sin of iniquity. As I taught you last week, sins, trespasses, transgression, iniquity. Judas was a sin of evil. 
Peter's was a sin of ignorance. It's important you learn the difference. You confront evil with your tongue. You don't bully people who make mistakes out of ignorance. It was a choice, number four, that we are left with today. It was a choice to serve others. He said, now that I've done this for you, do this for others. I've set you an example that you should do as I've done for you. No servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Jesus also said, whoever wants to be great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. I can't think of a better example of how we're to live than our Savior that got up out of the grave. You shouldn't even be told why you need to do it. But I want to give you some biblical reasons why you should serve. Number one, you should serve because it brings you joy. How many of you have ever served someone? Hopefully more than that. Lord, we're in church. It brings you joy. When everybody's battling depression during COVID and all this crazy stuff going on, man, I just I said, hey, let's just buy some food, man. Let's give out Easter baskets, man, to people. Just let them drive through. People think I did that for them. I did it for me. I did it for me. Because it's a joy to serve, man. I'm looking around at servants, man. Some people have the gift. Some of you, it's a struggle. May not be your gift. Some people have the gift to serve others. It's a spiritual gift, but it's a calling for each and every one of us. A calling that the Spirit will help you with. It brings us joy. It gives us purpose when we serve others, the Bible teaches. It's our purpose. Let me tell you something. When you die, people aren't going to remember how awesome of a business leader you were. If you're a preacher like me, they're not going to remember how good you could preach, how good you could communicate. If you're a singer, they're not going to remember how awesome you were singing. They're not going to remember what kind of car you drove, what kind of house you lived in. They're going to remember how you made them feel when you served them. It's an everlasting purpose. It gives us joy, brings purpose. It's an act of love. Greater love hath no man than he lay down his life for his friends. When you go low, God exalts you. You need promotion in your life, you have dreams, serve someone. Every time God has done something significant in my life, it came after a season of service to others. And I feel like the Lord was almost saying, hey, be faithful in this and then I'll give you that. It also brings rewards to your life. How many of you like rewards? If you don't raise your hand, you're lying. <laughs> Christian people act like they hate rewards, hate money. Y'all don't. If you do, give it all to me. I'll take care of it. <laughs> it brings rewards. It's what it says in 1 Peter. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, there's that tongue again, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. How do we do it? 
the Holy Spirit is called many things. One, it's called a helper. I'll leave with you another helper. Why does God want to fill you with his Holy Spirit? To help you. To help you. You need help forgiving that person that hurt you? There's a helper. You need help serving those who can't give you anything in return? You need a helper. You need help sharing your faith? There's a helper. You need help being faithful to your church? There's a helper. You need help in your marriage? There's a helper. Need help with grace? There's a helper. The Bible says that if we will be quiet, God will speak. It says, stand still and consider the wondrous works of God. Sometimes you just need to be quiet and serve someone. You know, Jesus said the greatest of us would be servants. Listen, we're called to serve people. Jesus came to serve and to save the least, the last, and the lost. So why don't you join an organization that helps feed people? that helps serve people. Yes, preach the gospel. Yes, give them the truth of God's word, but do it in a spirit of love. Be willing to serve someone. That's why you ought to be connected to a local church that's serving people. Yes, they need to be committed to the truth of God's word, the spirit of God, but they also need to take action in serving others. You know, that is the greatest act of love is when you serve someone that can do nothing else for you. They can't return it. You serve them simply because God has touched you and called you to a greater purpose. I want to challenge you today to go deeper in your relationship with God. You can learn more about how to do that at RonniePhillips.org. I thank you for watching Fully Alive. We'll see you next time. Don't miss a sermon or a show. Subscribe to Pastor Ronnie's YouTube channel and be sure to turn on notifications so you'll know when he uploads a new video. Follow him on Instagram too for more exclusive content. When we were little, we dreamed about being a hero. But most of us don't see ourselves as heroic now. The mundane and everyday world has drained our enthusiasm and the dream to be something extraordinary. But if you know God, there is a superhero on the inside of you. Aren't you ready to activate your hero within and be all that you were created to be? It's time to wake that dream inside of you it's time to reclaim the supernatural. It's time to let the hero shape you into the person you were created to be. Order The Hero Within by Pastor Ronnie Phillips at theherowithinbook.com. Pastor Ronnie Phillips delivers help and hope around the world through missions, media, and the message of grace. Go online to RonniePhillips.org to partner with Pastor Ronnie today and join us again next week for another message that will help you live free and fully alive.